this rune stone is a little bit special because it's the only rune stone that's known uh, which is erected in memory of a woman. There are rune stones that have been erected by women, by wives, by mothers for dead relatives. But this one was, it says, erected by a fella called Holmjot, um for his wife, I think. Um, and she is uh, praised for several qualities. She's a good wife, she's a good sister, and she's uh, a good housekeeper. So that tells us something about what uh, this culture valued in women. But another thing that's a little bit unusual and perhaps interesting about uh, this woman is her name. Um, her name is written up here. Uh, um, and it says Odin Disa. Um, so the, the first part of that seems to be a reference to the god Odin. And that's quite unusual uh, as a prefix for a name, uh, male or female. Although the word Thor is found in all kinds of names, even today in Iceland lots of people have the word Thor, men and women in the name. Odin not so frequently. And the second part of the name seems uh, to resemble, or perhaps be etymologically related to Disir, which is referring to female uh, divine entities, like goddesses a bit, but uh, slightly different. So Odin Disa, perhaps she was uh, named after uh, a, fam a family uh, involvement in some kind of female cult of Odin, uh, and perhaps she was given this name later because of her, uh, she had a, a role in that cult. Um, it's hard to say. If that was the case, it would explain why she was honoured with a stone when so many other women aren't. perhaps from the 9th century, and it says uh, about a guy who went to England and uh, this here, to Agla land, which means England, and uh, God rest his soul. I know I said that I wouldn't do any more videos about boats, but I forgot to mention in my last video that this uh, stone setting uh, of stone set ships is another uh, Scandinavian uh, custom relating to my theory of the boat cult. Uh, these ones at Ernenshoog, five boat shape uh, settings, like stone circles in the shape of a boat and um, they're pretty big and they're probably around the first century. So this is old and long before the Vendel era boat burials. But very near to here as well, you have a, uh, in Tuna, a whole load of the boat burials from the Vendel era. And they're very similar to those that you see in Upland. This is Vestmanland, which is the neighboring county to the west. But the crucial difference is that here, the people in the boat burials are women, whereas in Upland they're all men. Some people think that this might mean that while Upland had a religion that was focused on maybe a male-focused uh, deity or male-focused culture, there was some kind of culture here which, in which women played a more important role, which would explain why uh, these boat burials had women in them and how also women were in the centre of the burial grounds, whereas men were buried around the peripheries, uh, indicating secondary status to the women. And uh, it's also supported by a kind of maybe that, that rune stone um, for, that I've mentioned already. So we're not that far away from the rune stone which is dedicated to a woman. This rune stone here. Uh, it's quite late, it's from the late Viking era, 11th century. It's erected by a man 
nothing to do with a woman, but you can see it seems to come support the idea that uh, Versmundland had a fertility cult. Because this picture, which is unique to this runestone, has been interpreted as perhaps two interlocking bodies with a head here, two eyes, another at the top, you can't really see, quite obscured, and then their feet intertwined in some kind of sexual union. That would support the idea of a fertility cult here. The large mound behind is Ennant's Herb. That's what the area, the whole site takes its name from. That's a bit earlier. It's from maybe the late Vendel to the Viking era. There's conflicting uh, opinions on exactly when it was built. But it's, the, it's a really, really big mound. Uh, it's currently nine meters high, but it was bigger before. Um, it was for one person. I don't know if that was a woman or a man, but it might be a woman, but based on uh, other kinds of evidence from the local area. But uh, it would be quite unique because you don't see that kind of attention lavished on a female burial, except perhaps the Osseberi burial in Norway, which is from the Viking era. So uh, around, not, not so far off in time from, from this one. Some people connect this area with the cult to Freya because of necklaces and things, and the, the connection between the goddess Freya and the and necklaces. But uh, quite speculative, can't say for sure. But certainly the boat cult, which existed here, if connected to that in uh, prehistoric times, uh, seems to have been adapted to whatever the cult and the religious beliefs of the people were here. And despite the fact that neighboring Upland, the burial customs for the boat burials there are men and the ones here are female, there's still the consistency of the burial with the boat. So we see in, in that evidence that the boat cult, uh, as it developed into the Vendel era, was adaptable and it was changed for the roles, uh, for the uh, specifics of the local cults of that area. If indeed this area was a based on a Freyr cult and, and there was a more prominent Freyr cult in um, uh, Oakland, then we can say that the boat could be uh, adapted to either of the, the cults of either of these deities. But uh, that's not certain. But certainly boats are universal in that culture and consistently used for many, many centuries.